Hi, I'm Tim Ramerth. I'm uh, with Widseth. I'm a civil engineer on the project for the Brainerd High School. This is a unique project in the sense that we have an existing school and in this particular case we have a building that was constructed in the 50s and so the regulations were a little different at that time. There's a storm sewer that goes on our existing link within the high school. Based on the current regulation you have to remove that pipe and replace it with new. So in order to accomplish that, that would mean that we would have to take down that building reconstruct the pipe and put the building back. Well, that came at a cost of around a million dollars. So as a team, we had to come together and come up with a solution. So what we proposed is doing a jacking under the building. Here's what we do with roads, railroads, uh, other projects that we were working on. This would be a viable solution. And that was a substantial cost savings for the project. But what we had to do then is get this approved through the Department of Labor and Industries because it didn't fit the letter of the law with their rule. We had ICS, they're the construction manager of the site. We have Anderson Brothers, they're the general contractor for the site construction. We have RJ Mechanical, they were doing the plumbing for the building. And we had Michaels Construction that did the uh, sheet piling for this particular project. And that was a huge component because with the existing structures that we have in place, we had to have the sheet piling in order to create the excavation because the storm that goes under the building is fairly deep. My name is Scott Whittemore. I'm the project manager on the Brainerd High School North Campus project. The Jack and Board project came up as a result of meeting current Mendoli plumbing code regulations. We would have had to route three different pipes up to 20 inch diameter underneath an existing portion of the building. Uh, had we had to move forward with that, that direction, it would have required us to tear down uh, what we called the G-Link. Because Widseth was familiar with this type of construction method, uh, Tim Ramerth, the civil engineer on the project, recommended that we pursue it as an option uh, to potentially save costs. We involved at that time Braun Intertech to get additional geotech evaluations and ground penetrating radar to confirm uh, that we could indeed uh, perform the jack and bore successfully. After all the pricing came back, we realized that we were saving approximately $600,000 for the project. Our uh, work scope is the entire site package, so it's everything from the uh, site work, grading, paving, utility work. In corporation with the uh, pool excavation, I had uh, Michaels contracting that did the, the piling. And they also do warring, so I contacted them and they self-performed the, the shoring box for the pit and uh, the boring and the jack and bore portion of that as well. My name is Brandon Young. I am with Michaels Corporation. I am the general manager. It was in a, a very dry, but extremely sandy soil, uh, which created a different mechanism for jacking and boring. Uh, we, we needed to be careful to not create a void underneath the building, bringing in too much soil or removing too much sand. So we had to structure the front of the lead section of casing in such a manner so that that auger would not do that. I think one of the unique things that Michael's brought to the table on this particular project, we use an electric driven drill. Uh, rather than a standard gas engine drill. And the reason for that, uh, this particular bore had a tight sheeted launch pit. So that sheeted pit um, doesn't ventilate very well. And so we, were, we brought this electric unit in so that we didn't have exhaust fumes building up in, in the construction, just creating an overall safer environment. My name is Alex Bitter. I am a civil engineer with Widseth. What we're doing is we're taking a three foot casing and drilling it underneath the building and we'll connect to another storm structure on the other side and we'll take a two foot diameter PVC pipe and run that through that casing pipe. Once we have this completed, the surveyors will come out and we'll take a shot on each side of the casing to get an elevation to make sure that we have a constant grade and they'll build chocks. That PVC pipe will sit on those chocks, and once everything is set and in place, they'll blow uh, like a silica sand through there, so that whole thing is just filled with sand, so nothing shifts. This is one of the many cool things that we get to do on these school projects that not really everybody can see, not everybody knows about. So I just wanted to 
give everybody a little insight into what we're doing within the site.